This crowd is gathering in Kim Il-sung Square. But not to perform any rally or watch one of the DPRK's famous military parades. These local Pyongyangers have turned out to welcome in the new year. Juche 110, or 2022. For those who might not know much of the DPRK, the bright lights, LED screen and upbeat dance music might not be what you expect from a Pyongyang concert. But the history of music culture in the DPRK is a long one, and it's a culture that continues to evolve. There are several popular genres of music in the DPRK, and although this certainly isn't an exhaustive list, there are some significant themes which run through some of the DPRK's most popular songs. Performance venues are dotted around the country, notably in Pyongyang, where they range from the traditional Pyongyang Grand Theater to the Soviet-style April 25th House of Culture, and from the ultra-modern East Pyongyang Grand Theater to the city center Mansude Art Theater from military marches to traditional folk songs, and from upbeat pop music to powerful operatic pieces. The music culture in the DPRK is generally themed around a few core principles. Patriotism, history, nature, or Korean culture. So, let's take a look at some of the DPRK's most popular music, starting with the most internationally ubiquitous genre. To an outsider, this is probably the most distinctive music from the DPRK. However, military music in the DPRK is divided between a few different groups. The Korean People's Army State Merited Chorus and Symphony Orchestra is the Korean military's foremost musical unit. Formed in 1947, the group served during the Korean War to boost morale amongst the soldiers. Since then, the group has performed to foreign dignitaries, attended overseas concerts, and collaborated with other Korean bands, such as the Morambong Band, which we'll get to in a moment. Whilst the State Merited Chorus is an orchestral military unit, the central band of the Korean People's Army is a classic marching band. Formed in February 1946 as the Band of the Pyongyang Military School, the band specialises in marching whilst playing their instruments, and are a staple of military events and parades in the DPRK, as well as at the occasional foreign performance. The Band of the State Affairs Commission has risen to prominence in recent years. Giving its first reported performance in January 2020, the band is a mix of orchestral instruments and a chorus section. The band performs a mixture of classical songs, rousing orchestral music, traditional Korean music and popular songs.
The first group to discuss in this category is more of an umbrella organisation, encompassing many of the DPRK's most popular bands and launching the careers of many artists and performing groups. The Mansude Art Troupe was formed originally in 1946 as the Pyongyang Art Troupe and, at present, groups such as the Merited Women's Instrumental Ensemble, the Mansude Art Troupe Chorus, the Pyongyang Philharmonic Orchestra and the Samjion Band and Orchestra are classified as part of the Mansude Art Troupe. The group was awarded the Order of Kim Il-sung in 1972. In 1985, the Potombo Electronic Ensemble was formed, as part of the Mansude Art Troupe. Taking their name from the famous Battle of Potombo during the revolution against the Imperial Japanese Army. You can find out more about that in my Samjion video. Potombo has gone on to become one of the DPRK's most popular bands, with their distinctive style of electronic music becoming well known outside the country too. Hits such as Cholima Dalinda, Kuiparam, Ne Ilumuchi Maseo, Ne Nara Chelo Choa, and Pangapsumida have become known by locals and foreigners alike. And although Po Chombo may not have been the first group to play these songs, they're often responsible for their most popular recordings. Another popular band to form within the Mansade Art Troupe was the aforementioned Samjion Band, formed in 2009. The Samjion Band takes its name from the ideologically important northern city of Samjion, and the band is known for playing a mixture of classical instruments, often incorporating this more classical style with modern dancing and upbeat songs. Next up is a favourite of DPRK Explained and is responsible for almost all of the music on this channel, the Wang Jesan Light Music Band. Established just a couple of years before the Po Chombo Ensemble on July 22nd 1983, and, like Po Chombo, another band that has enjoyed great popularity in the DPRK. Once again, like Po Chombo, Wang Jesan is named after another important site. The Wang Jesan Conference of 1933 was held in the far northeast of Korea between anti-Japanese revolutionaries and has since given its name to the band. The band also operates a self-contained dance troupe, the Wang Jesan Dance Troupe. Songs by the band vary greatly in theme, from traditional Korean pieces to upbeat modern DPRK songs. Finally, we're on to the most internationally famous pop band in the DPRK, the Moran Bong Band. Named after Moran Hill in downtown Pyongyang, the Moran Bong Band was formed in 2012 and quickly came to prominence as a result of its modern style of performance, a true all-female rock band with the distinctive DPRK flair. Premiering on the 6th of July 2012, the Moran Bong Band has since come to enjoy incredible popularity in Korea. And despite being so relatively new, it is now one of the most recognisable bands outside of the peninsula. What connects many of these bands is how many of them have taken part in the Pyongyang New Year's concert. These concerts on Kim Il-sung Square in the lead up to midnight on December the 31st are a relatively new phenomenon, with the start of 2019 also marking the start of this tradition. Now, every year, Locals and foreign visitors alike flood the central square to celebrate the new calendar year as performers from many of the DPRK's bands perform their most popular songs on a purpose-built stage overlooking the Taedong River and the Juche Tower. Often clad in stylish winter gear, the performers keep the crowd entertained until midnight 
when the fireworks begin. A change of pace now, as we discuss the DPRK's tradition of revolutionary operas, deriving from Korean revolutionary songs which often told stories of heroism during the struggle against the occupying Imperial Japanese forces. These days, the Pyongyang Grand Theatre is the most common venue to catch a performance of one of these operas, although they've also been performed abroad. Here are the five great revolutionary operas of the DPRK, all of which have been turned into epic films. Here's a quick rundown. First produced in 1971, Sea of Blood tells the story of Sun Yo and her family living in occupied Korea during the 1930s, before joining the socialist cause to fight against their oppression. This opera is heralded as one of the greats, as it extols many of the key virtues of the Juche ideology which encourages self-reliance against outside aggression. The Flower Girl, along with being one of the great revolutionary operas, is also a very popular movie in the DPRK produced in 1972. The story follows a Korean girl living under Imperial Japanese occupation, caring for her mother and blind sister. After altercations with the evil landlord and the death of her mother, the landlord arranges for the blind sister to be killed after a series of perceived wrongdoings, after which they imprison the flower girl, only for her brother, a member of the Korean People's Revolutionary Army, to return and free her. The story of Choi Byung-hung, who disguises himself as a Japanese lackey during their occupation in order to deceive them. However, he is too convincing and ends up being hated by the locals. The shame of being related to this apparent traitor causes his daughter to commit suicide, after which he uses his influence over the authorities to lure them into a trap, during which he sacrifices his life for the revolution. A true daughter to the party is unique amongst the five great revolutionary operas, as it is the only one to be set during the Korean War. The protagonist, Kang Yong ok is a military nurse with the Korean People's Army, and the opera follows her service as she fights against the US forces. The main theme, Odiegishimnika Kurin Changun, or Where Are You Dear General, is played every morning across the capital city as a melodic wake-up call to the residents of Pyongyang. Once again, set during the occupation of Korea by Imperial Japan, this opera takes a sharp turn as the family at the centre are separated, only for the performance to jump 20 years ahead in time to see the family reunite under the new socialist system of the DPRK. The underlying theme of the opera is the idea that the Kungang region of Korea, known today as one of the country's most naturally beautiful areas, was worthless under Imperial Japanese rule, but today it enjoys great importance in the DPRK.
The final genre of music we'll discuss is folk music. These songs, many of which have existed in Korea for centuries, remain popular in the DPRK. These songs are often not so distinctively DPRK, with many of them having enjoyed great popularity in the South, as well as with songs such as Arirang being heralded as an anthem for unified Korea due to its extensive heritage and continued popularity and importance in both Koreas. Another popular folk song is Toraji. Once again, popular on both sides of the 38th parallel, the song originated in Hwanghae, today in the northern part of Korea. But by residents of the south, it is considered a local song of Gyeonggi province. As a result, differences in lyrics have emerged over time. It's not uncommon for these songs to be covered by popular modern bands, such as the aforementioned Pochombo Electronic Ensemble, and it is possible for foreign visitors to enjoy a performance by some of the DPRK's top bands, as well as attending the New Year's concert. So, if you're looking to get your fix of popular Korean music, check out my video on how to visit the DPRK. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into music in the DPRK. As always, if you want to support the channel, like and subscribe to keep up to date with all the new DPRK Explained content, and if you can, support me on Patreon, the link for that is in the description, to join these lovely people who help keep the channel going.